KM6IKH at the Next Gen Lab. I'm going to show everyone how simple, easy, and quite fundamental it is to uh, set your Wi Fi or change your Wi Fi, modify your Wi Fi connection with Pi Star, and uh, things of that nature. So, here we go. You just saw me boot up the browser, go right into Pi Star. Uh, I do use uh, I do use uh, Firefox. I do not use any Microsoft products if I can avoid them because they're buggy. On top of buggy PCs, so Firefox is by far a, a substantially more stable and um, friendly browser to use. So I recommend that everybody uses Firefox. If you don't have it, it's free. Download it and uh, use that for your main browser. You'll love it. Okay, so. Uh, seeing that this video is going to pertain to wireless. Okay, first thing, here's the wireless configuration. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is interface is down. But why am I on the internet? I can pass the signal on digital radio. Huh. It's because I'm hardwired. I have a, right now I have a commander hooked up. And the commander is hooked up via hard, hardwire or a Cat5 cable, LAN cable, same, same, to my router. Uh, I hope everybody has a router that still has the uh, the standard hardwire capability. It is highly recommended for a plethora of reasons, uh, particularly when you're doing anything with Pi Star. So, anyways, uh, configure Wi-Fi. You hit the configure Wi-Fi, and you'll see there's my cell phone uh, information here, which is irrelevant at this point in time. I'll just save and connect, but it won't connect because my cell phone is not on right now. And I can add a network, and I can change this if I want to change it to another URL, uh, excuse me, another SSID, or a password uh, known in this window as PSK. I can do that right here, and simply hit Save and Connect. Do remember, you must save and connect everything with PyStar. PyStar does not autosave. Perhaps it will in the future. As of uh, this video on uh, January 10th, 2019, it does not. So add a network. You can scan for networks. This is the easy peasy way to do it, actually. Go in here and scan for networks. Uh, when you scan for networks, you're going to see a whole bunch of networks pop up. It's supposed to scan. There we go. Scan for networks, and let's see, just found one. Now, when you do this, <clears throat> if you're in close proximity to your neighbor's routers, and that could be anywhere within a couple hundred yards, actually, depending upon how much power they're putting out on their router or the configuration, etc., etc., etc. As you're seeing today, it's just picking my router up here in the office. That's the CIA1 router. So that's my router, which is a 2.4 gigahertz uh, channel 6, blah, blah, blah. Gives you signal strength and gives me my security type I have, which is WPA-PSK, TKIP. That's my, my router set up, and my router works perfect, on, uh, perfect for passing a signal. Oh, by the way, my router works perfect for passing a signal when it's hardwired. This particular router, it's a Linksys in the blue and gray box, will not pass a, a digital signal, period. It will not do it <clears throat> over, uh, over uh, RF, over Wi-Fi. That's the particular router I have here. But when you hardwire them, uh, being the bang of the boom, Bob's your uncle, works just fantastic. So anyways, Wi-Fi info, that'll show you your connection, and in this case, once more, I'm hardwire LAN cabled, so um, it's showing the interface down because this is quote unquote Wi Fi. I am not connected Wi Fi, I'm connected hardwire, and there's no indication here that says hardwire. <laughs> so understand how that works. So when you see interface is down, well, either your wireless connection is not hooked up or you're on hardwire cable. Uh, you will see there's a MAC address here that's being supplied, and that's about it when you're hardwired in. But it works marvelously well. So that's the configure. And here you go. If you want to add a network, just add here. Add your SSID, PSK, save. It, it's that easy. It's really that simple. It takes about all of 10, 15 seconds to modify, change, add, or you can delete. 
you can easily delete your uh, Wi-Fi as well. If I want to delete my my uh, Wi-Fi, let's go here. Delete, save and connect. And boom, Bob's your uncle. Gone. Now I can add. So I can refresh and just start from scratch. How simple is that, right? So basic, so simple, and so easy. Simple, simple. Pi Star makes it simple. You know, I, I, you know, Andy Taylor over at Pi Star. Kudos to him. He made a great piece of software. It works wonderfully well. Again, I'll do scan for networks right here. So you don't even have to type it in. If you have your phone on or your whatever device you're hooking up to the internet, sometimes you have to push it twice, um, it will simply give you a list. And I have pushed this at my QTH right here in NextGen Lab because we're around a lot, of, a lot of other routers and computer equipment and adjacent uh, suites. Uh, I've seen as much as like 15 different things pop up in here when I'm scanning for networks. Uh, don't be surprised if you see that, particularly if you live like in a condominium or something like that. You'll see a boatload of these pop up. Uh, and it's it's not a security problem as long as everybody has their routers uh, password protected and security you know at least a basic level of security it's it's no big deal so anyways let's so say I want to select CIA one that is my router here in the office I'll select you see it'll pop up it's right here now I do have to put my password in which I don't need to do right now so I'll put my password in and if I were to put my password in just say you know uh, put a couple digits in like so save and connect boom that's it now that's not my real password so uh, I'm gonna just gonna delete this right now so when I go to uh, Wi-Fi info you will still see the same information here showing the interface down configure Wi-Fi now I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. Save and connect. Well, there's nothing to connect to, and that's it. Now, if I want to start from scratch and I want to start adding Wi-Fi networks, just simply hit Add. And it's it's honestly it's that fundamental, it's that basic, and it's that simple in Pi Star. If you get it wrong, no big deal. Just do it over, and uh, be very very cognizant that you have to. You have to get capitals and uh, and uh, lowercase or upper and lowercase. Easier to state it that way. <clears throat> Make sure your upper and lowercase is correct, both in your password and your SSID, and no special characters, i.e., none of these. None of these. Do not put any special characters. Do not put any spaces. <clears throat> you can get away with some. But the, the wise, the prudent, and the best practices in Pi Star is don't use any special characters, including spaces. Don't do it. Yes, you can get away with some, but I'm telling you right now, you can also get glitched and have a plethora of problems with your Wi-Fi. We see it all the time, uh, even though we give people a, a very, very complete instruction set to not use special characters lo and behold we'll get the information back from a customer and it's got a special character or two uh, even though we've stated implicitly to not do that yet it still pops up so uh, I'm telling you in the video and in real life all of this uh, this special character garbage as far as Pi Star is concerned it's special character garbage uh, no, no commas, no like Bob's phone, none of that. No commas, no apostrophes, absolutely no special characters. I'm not overemphasizing that. I will beat it into the ground a little bit because even with complete instruction sets, we see it over and over and over again. And as I stated, you can actually get away with some special characters, but it's very wise, prudent, and smart to not use them at all in Pi Star, go with a longer, go with a longer, uh, a longer string of characters. Do something like that, you know. Do it the long string of characters, something like this. I'm just putting gibberish on the screen, but something like that for an SSID. Well, whatever your SSID is, just take any special characters out of it. But for a password, for example, example. Okay.
I'm putting gibberish in, but this is good gibberish. Now you can't see this, it's coded. But uh, something like this, a nice long string of SSID, uh, a long string of eight or more characters for, for your password is extremely secure when you're using upper and lower case. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, not government level, you know, level one eyes only security stuff here. Uh, for the most part, nobody on earth cares about getting into your computer or into your Pi Star. And, uh, uh, in less over the internet that's a whole different thing we're talking about local things right now just local just local between you and the Pi Star or your next gen machine and uh, just bear in mind it's not top secret stuff here so if you use eight characters upper and lower case you know, you could you put any gibberish you want in there you really could it's going to be extremely secure chances of anybody coming in and trying to hack your system and find out what your special upper and lower case characters are is just about between slim and nil. Uh, so, you know, something crazy like that for an SSID and you know, something equally as long as that for a PSK, if you're really, really security minded, is going to be all the security you're going to need for your Pi Star. Remember, there's nothing in your Pi Star for people to grab. It's just the operating system, your call sign, and your DMR ID, which is all public information. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. No one's going to come in and hack your Pi Star. I've never heard of it ever in two years of you know building hotspots. Not even one single time. There's no purpose. Someone would have to be, excuse the phrase, but brain dead to want to break into your your Pi Star. There's nothing there to to gather. There's there's no files. There's no information. You don't keep your banking information on your hotspot. So you know understanding the logic and going along with me on this, I think you'll I think you'll see the point. Just make sure it's a good eight character or more uh, SSID and PSK, and that's it. Bing da da boom. Bob's your uncle. Simple. Whatever you put in there, make sure you hit save and connect. You must do this once more, and that's it. That's how you set up Wi-Fi in PyStar. It is just that simple. I can't break it down anymore. I don't want to beat a dead horse on this, but most of the calls that I get are Wi-Fi related. Most of them. <clears throat> as far as the machines are concerned, I don't get a lot, but the ones that do come in seem to always, always gravitate around the wireless configuration, and a lot of people think there's some type of mystery in the setup. As you cl clearly could see, there's no mystery. It's extremely simple. It's very basic. It's quite fundamental, and if you just stick by the basic rules of eight characters or more, no special characters, you're going to connect to your Wi-Fi, just as long as your Wi-Fi is on. And do bear in mind, if you have a cell phone, make sure it has four or five bars. Um, I've seen people get in with as little as two bars of, of juice or, uh, or signal strength on their cell phones, but it's not advised. So make sure you're getting four to five bars on your cell phone. That's just a safe rule of thumb. And if you have four to five bars on your cell phone slash smartphone for an internet connection, uh, you're going to be in the connection, it's going to pass a signal. Um, and that's as simple as it is. So this is my segment on wireless configuration in PyStar. I just can't break it down anymore because that's all there is to it. And it's really easy. If you make a mistake, so what? Go back, delete it, and go ahead and redo it again. Simple as that. Very, 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 very simple. And uh, is what you saw me do here is exactly how I set up every single Wi-Fi on each and every single unit that uh, that we send out. So it's Bobby here, KM6IKH at the Next Gen, Next Gen Electronics Labs. And I uh, hope everybody has a great day. 73.